today we're going to talk about transition metals and how to incorporate them when we're naming our different compounds. So that we have to keep in mind is when we're naming our metals, we have to indicate the charge of the metal indicated by a Roman numeral. There are some exceptions to this rule though. We don't have to do this for group one, group two, and then group 13, which we can, we can call group three. So it's gonna be um, starting with boron, down, uh, all the way down, and then zinc and silver. That's something you're gonna have to memorize. So it's basically your transition metals plus a few more. But a good way to remember it is you're going to include a Roman numeral for the charge for all metals except for group one, group two, group three, which is starting with boron all the way down, zinc and silver. So like I said, this is generally the transition metals that we have to indicate um, the charge with a Roman numeral. The reason for that is that these metals can make cations that have more than one charge. Good example of this is iron. So iron could be Fe2+, or it can be Fe3+. When writing a compound, if you don't in indicate with a Roman numeral what the charge is, we won't know what cation you're talking about. So it's really important to indicate that. Okay, so how do we do this? For example, let's do copper. So we know that when we're naming the cation, which is the metal in this case, so it has a positive charge, you write the name of the metal. So we did this in just our normal ionic bonding. We write the name of the metal, then in parentheses we're going to write the charge, and then the word ion. So here we have copper, and it tells us that the charge is one, so we write the Roman numeral one, and then the word ion. Simple. All right, for iron, we can write the word iron, and then it tells us that it's a plus two charge. So we write the Roman numeral two, and then ion. Next one. Iron, Roman numeral three, and the word ion. Lastly here we have nickel with a two plus charge. So we write nickel. In parentheses we put the Roman numeral two and then the word ion. Okay, so now we're going, going to have to do this while it's in a compound. So you're going to write the name of the cation first, put the charge that it is, and then you're going to write the uh, anion. So here we have copper Cl2. What we have to remember here is that when we were writing formulas, we crisscross the charges in order to get how many of each component there were. So if chlorine has a two subscript, that means that the copper's charge is two plus. And if copper has a one subscript, so if there is no number there, that means that it's a one. That means that our chlorine has a negative one charge. So here, we would write copper, two, chloride. Remember when we name anions, we do the stem of the word and then add I. So copper, two, chloride. All right, so this next one is manganese and uh, nitrogen. If you look on our periodic table, we know that nitrogen has a charge of minus three, based on the, the group it's in. So if nitrogen has a minus three, that means that the subscript here would be three. If both of these do not have a subscript, that means that they're the same number. So it would be 
3 and 3. And you can reduce everything to the smallest common denominator, which is just 1. So that's why it's MN1, uh, N1. So if this subscript was originally 3, we know that manganese's charge is plus 3. Still, we can go over it in class. 